Hi, good, uh, good evening. My name is Daniel Ibarra. I'm a PCA agronomist. Uh, and I work in mainly in strawberries for the last 30 years. And today we're going to be talking about how to control two spider mites uh, and Lewis mites using biological control and combination of sprays as well. And uh, I have a PowerPoint presentation in Spanish, but I will translate. As we go along, we have to have a, a good monitoring, strong, aggressive monitoring. Uh, we have to interpret the data. We have to order on time the biological controls uh, a week, at least before the day of release. We have to hold them in a proper place. We have to train the crews who are going to release it, if it's going to be done by hand. And, uh, and we have to time the, the applications. Uh, these are some of the common errors that we make. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, the, the biggest mistakes we make are not having effective control is weak monitoring, giving us wrong information, starting to release late um, or too early as well. Um, also another is using the wrong chemicals, harmful chemicals to destroy the beneficials that we're releasing and good and having also good cultural practice beginning including uh, ground control. We're talking about Tetranicus urtica, and uh, the main ones would be Louis Mai, the te Tetranicus uh, Luisi. <clears throat> Here we have some images of the damage of the pests that we're trying to control. It also happens in blackberries, raspberries, uh, Tetranicus uh, Tetuspat prefers hot, the heat, and if we have, it starts in, in December when we have a summer-like temperatures and we have high humidity, I see the first breakdown. <clears throat> Biology of the spider mite, their cycle, the life cycle, we include um, nymphs, uh, egg, larva, proto-nymphs, uh, neotonymph, and adults. High reproductive cycles in the middle of or late spring into summer include seven days uh, from egg to adult. Here we have a, a graph of the life cycle of the two spot. Uh, starting with a good preparation, ground preparation, good fumigation. Uh, the damage would always begin in the plants. And would, the eggs would come in the plants and will hatch when the temperatures are favorable for hatching in a, in a warm summer uh, like winter season. Uh, I do start releasing Persimilis early in December, uh, second week of December, one to five percent at first sign. And normally I would uh, start releasing uh, 20,000 per acre on a weekly basis. Once, the, once we detect that there is the two spot, then then I start the release and don't stop. Some of the images of the age of the plant. November 2017. You don't see damage, but the damage would be in the first true leaves and not in the in the new leaves. You can see there. You see, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Okay. Uh, the first, the bottom of the, of 
the spider must live on the bottom of the strawberry leaves. Here you can see some damage on the older leaves, not on the new leaves. And here we have Lewis mites, very similar symptoms than uh, two spot. It eats away the plant. Petrocytos persimilis and Ambriceos californicus. Persimilis is uh, feeds on two spot. It's, it's very specific. Will not eat nothing else. Uh, Californicus will feed on pollen, will feed on Lewis mites. So this is very important. I start with persimilis and then I follow up with um, Californicus. Petrocytis persimilis, uh, some of the data here is uh, zero days re-entry, uh, pre-harvest with a zero day pre-harvest. It's very safe. It's very selective. It doesn't have no residuals. Uh, safe for the workers, safe for consumers, uh, safe for the environment, and will save you'll save a lot of money on spray chemicals. This is a graph showing the life cycle of the predator and the pest. As you can see the the temperature has a big effect on it. Uh, when low temperature, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, from egg to adult, 33 days. But when the temperature goes high, 85 degrees, from egg to adult, six days. So you can, and we're talking the same for the Persimilis and the Californicus, comparing to the, to the two spot. Two spot can reproduce from egg to adult in four days. California six days. Very similar, similar to the two spot. It's a, a great shot of the persimilis feeding on a on a two spot. The best way to the best time be. To release them is what I should say the best time not to release them was high winds, it's raining, it's going to be forecasted rain, going to be forecasting frost. Uh, I, it's just use your common sense to not release on if it's going to rain or if it's going to freeze or if it's going, the winds are too high. We have been releasing with drone applications with very, a great deal of success. Uh, most of my applications, uh, 80%, 90% are done by, by hand. Where did you get the product? You need to, uh, this is how it comes in packages. It comes in boxes with ice, ice is insulated. So we keep the integrity of the quality of the pro of persimilis and californicus. So here we got uh, a short video of people releasing it by hand. And the rates are given, that I give it, depending on if it's gonna be 10,000 per acre, 20,000 per acre, 30,000 per acre would be determined on the number of steps. I, that's how I work it. and. Uh, I go on both sides directly to the plant. Here we have another one showing. Um, these two guys are walking and releasing on, the, on top of the beds, directly to the plants. So if, if you can see here the, the pest and the predator. Uh, we have to learn to identify the Lewis mite and the two spider mite. They're hard to tell, but it, it definitely it can be 
It can be detected whether you have Lewis mite and uh, two spot combination in the field. If you only got persimilis, you're not going to control it unless you're spending more money on the sprays. And this is a quick feed, uh, this, uh, a quick video on the Californicus feeding on the two spot. Um, the guy's feeding on the two spot and it will not let go until, until leaves them dry. This is a very short video, so it'll be interesting to see. See how, see how he, feed, he's taking the juice, all the juices out. And each one of the Californicas will feed on at least 15, 20 a day, and they work day and night. You can see how he changes colors, just leaves them strapped. And he goes to find another one. The main thing we need to worry about is not to kill them when we spray. So we, especially when we have large uh, canopy on the plant, making sure that if we still have, if we still have two spot to worry about, then we have to make sure that we hit them. The damage, uh, that they do to the strawberry even at 1% or 10%, even at 1% yield losses can be significant to uh, economically to the grower. The cost of biological controls is $500 per acre on the predatory mice would be less than 1% yield loss. So it's not even a question of money, it's a question of how much you want to lose, and you'll be losing more money but not applying them and correctly. These are some of the chemicals that we have that are harmful. I would recommend not use it. Brigade, well, Lorsban is out of the question. Agrimec, Epimec, uh, Pigamic, Ogeron, Malathion, Fujimide, Dibrom, none of those would be advisable. These are harmful chemicals. If you have used this and you have predatory mites, I would not recommend that. These are the safe chemicals that we know that are safe to use while you're establishing predatory mites. Savvy acromite, canamide, pendens, microtile, insecticides, steam courier, uh, grandivo, uh, and I have, what I've done here is I prepared a small graph for you to, so you can see that I start releasing two spot on December and you can see the graph, uh, the blue graph and where the sprays go. If I put in four sprays here, but sometimes even two sprays will knock the population down below the 5%. We have time and percent infection. And then the green line would, will have the, while the Persimilis and Californicos are, are cl climbing on the establishment of the, uh, of the strawberries, the ratio between Persimilis and, and uh, Californicos versus the two spot will be, will increase. So you'll have an even fight. Uh, you don't have a, uh, you'll have a 50, when you have, when you reach, a balance of 50% two spot and you have 50% Pelicari, Californicus and Persimilis, same amount of eggs and different life stages, then I stop spraying the two spot um, will be taken care of by the Californicus and Persimilis. Uh, these are some of the fungicides that I use that are safe. And uh, making sure that the spray tractor is calibrated properly to be able to get the bottom of the leaves wet. And I've done a, a small uh, sensitive paper, making sure that the tractor uh, is wet in the bottom of the leaves. If the bottom of the leaves are staying dry, then you're getting a 20% control, and I'd rather have 80 to 90% control. It's very, very hard to get 100% control on the chemicals. So uh, begin your sprays 
with the establishment of the two spot is important. So the timing to apply the chemicals, I would say spray while you're developing uh, the establishment of the California and persimmons, like I put in the graphs here. Time, the two spot goes higher than the persimmon, it's okay. If the, we do the spray, it brings it down. It keeps going higher, do another spray, we bring down the population. <clears throat> Rotate the chemicals, and you may mix them up, including fungicide, because at the same time, we can be controlling botrytis if we can control uh, botrytis controlling uh, uh, powdery mildew and tracnos and other dis, uh, plant diseases so what I do is I I, I do uh, two acres per load about a hundred uh, 200 gallons per acre dilution just to make sure it's some conventional sprayer, just to make sure I get the bottom of the wet, uh, bottom of the leaf wet. Uh, these are young plants, three to four crowns. They're looking clean. Here we got uh, persimilis going out to the two spot. On the other side, I have a Californicus cleaning up the leaves with some limbs. You can see them there. Very difficult to see, but you can see them. And these are uh, uh, summer plants. So the, we'll start again the, the same cycle. The summer plants will be faster than the in the winter than the fall planting. We start releasing at about right, right about now and uh, depending on when you plant it, in July or, or August, uh, we start releasing until, and, and in conventional, I use 80,000 per acre and four, uh, four releases of 20,000 per acre. On organic, I do 100,000 per acre between sprays. So I'm pretty much done. Uh, I don't know how much time do I have. Okay. So what, what, what I have here, what I wanted to show, show here in this is the, the strawberry, mar strawberry industry is, uh, is huge in California, 78%. In Mexico, 10%. In Florida, 11%. And uh, using less than 1% of the California farmland soil produces the fourth most valuable crop in, in California. And as you can see on the other slide over there, we have 63% of the berry per pound versus uh, blackberries, raspberries, or blueberries. Uh, the United States, Mexico, and Spain represent 51.2% of the strawberry ex exports. And uh, the majority of the production after July, 50% of the California has been already harvested. And just a small shot of the uh, samples of the uh, strawberries and apple and orange. So here we got clean uh, spider mite free strawberries. Mayo 4, 2018. These are fields that are clean from the two spot going into May, June. That's what you want to have. We want to be done with two spider mites, hopefully in April, 
Mar at the end of April, March, April. These are strawberry fields free clean of, of two spot. 